Somebody say, God is good. Hallelujah. God will give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that if you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. And I don't know about you, but I've just made up in my mind that I'm not going to let a rock cry out for me. I've just decided that I will bless the Lord with all of my heart, that his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Because had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, had it not been for his mercy, I'd be consumed. So I lift up a hallelujah to the God of my salvation. I lift up a hallelujah to the God that's yet still making ways. I lift up a hallelujah to a mind regulating God. I lift up a hallelujah to a healer. I lift up a hallelujah to the deliverer. I lift up a hallelujah to my provision when I need provision, my peace when I need peace, my strength when I need strength. Lord, we thank you for being absolutely everything that we need you to be when we need it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you praise because you're worthy. God, we give you praise because you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. 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 I looked up the definition of worthy and all I found was Jesus. Hallelujah. So, God, we thank you. Lord, as we come into this place in this space at this time, we ask that your will be done. Whatever it is that you desire to do in this moment, God, have your way. Lord, we give you permission to move in every single area of our lives. We give you permission to move in our thought processes. We give you permission to move in our businesses and in our ministries. God, we give you permission to move in our health and our relationships, oh God. We give you permission to move in our desires and our heart posture and even in our head. God, we give you permission. Lord, you stand at the door knocking. Knock no more. We are letting you in. Oh, King of glory, come in, come in, come in, come in. King of glory, come in. Let the king of glory in. God, we thank you for being an ever-present help in our time of trouble. Jehovah Shammah, we thank you that you're here right now. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for your consistency. We thank you that you are a solid rock that never changes and never moves. We thank you that in an unstable world, in an uncertain world, you are yet still stability. We thank you that in a world lacking a calmness, you are serenity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you that you're yet still opening our hearts. We thank you that you're yet still cleansing us in our minds, renewing your spirit in us. Coming up, the kingdom of coming up against the kingdom of darkness. Even yet, still, I'm thankful that you are breaking down boundaries. Even now, I'm thankful that you are yet still good. At the end of the day, in the beginning of the day, God, we thank you for a fresh wind, O oh Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving thanking you for danger seen and unseen. We don't even know about, but we thank you that you stopped every bullet. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you that you stopped every attack. How do we know? Because we're here in this moment. We thank you that we've still got purpose. We thank you that there's yet still power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you, we 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 thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, we give you a high praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. Lord, we've searched and we found nobody like you, Jesus. So God, we thank you. That even in the middle of the night when we're by ourselves, we're never alone because you're with us. We thank you that angels are watching over us and protecting us even now. 
I'm thankful that you're always fighting for us in the spiritual realm, that the battles that we do get to experience are only fractional compared to the fullness of what you protect us from. God, I'm thankful for your protection, a Psalms 91 protection, that all we have to do is lift up the name Jesus and you respond with covering. I'm thankful that all we have to do is lift up the name Jesus and you respond with a keeping. I'm thankful that all we have to do is lift up the name Jesus and protection is our portion. I'm thankful that you're yet still a coverer and even a carrier. Oh God, I'm thankful that even when our knees get weak and we feel like we can't make it, you yet still are carrying us lest we dash our foot against a stone, a stone, a stone, a stone. God, I'm thankful that you keep us from the stones, from the rocks from the terror, from the perilous pestilence. God, I'm thankful. Lord, we thank you for every gift and every talent, every single anointing. We thank you for the ability to communicate. We thank you for devices that we might even be able to watch this live stream. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that you are yet patient with us, loving and caring. We thank you, God that there's absolutely no other love in this world that can compare to your love. And because we have your love, we've got everything that we need to succeed. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If God's been good to you, somebody say, God is good. If God's been good to you, somebody say, God is good. If God hasn't been good to you, you don't have a right to say God is good. But if he's been good to you, can somebody just say God is good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. All right. Hallelujah. We're going to be in Romans chapter 12 today during this Bible study. If we can move on, if we can move on, if we can move on, we're going to be in Romans chapter 12. Um, hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you praise. All right. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to the Robinboyton.com. <laughs> Oh, if you go on therobinboyton.com, you're going to find some exciting, exciting stuff. And so as we are in this season and as we are stepping into everything that God has for us, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, there's something good to be found there. And so when you get a chance, check out therobinboyton.com and make sure you sign up. Make sure you sign up. Um, it's, a, it's a landing page there now. Um, so sign up, read it, explore it, see what's coming soon, and make sure you join the wait list so that you can stay connected for the exciting stuff. Listen, if these live streams have been impactful to your life in any capacity, if these live streams have been effective, if they've been necessary for your life, therobinboynton.com is about to bring you an entirely expansive experience, right? Expansive because it's taking what we're doing here and expanding it to do absolutely so much more. And so I look forward to that. I look forward to giving you practical, practical resources where you can take all of the information that we walk through and that we study and that we talk about and that is taught on this platform. What is this platform? Anything, the Robin Boynton, that you could actually take that and walk that thing out, right? We don't want to just be uh, hearers of the word, but we want to be doers of the word. And sometimes there's a disconnection between what we want and what we are actually doing. I may want to do good, but then there's a disconnect between me wanting it and actually doing it. The RobinBoynton.com is going to bring it all together that you might be able to do and be everything that God has created you to be and everything that God has anointed you to do. And so I look forward to that. Check that out when you have the chance. We're going to be in Romans chapter 12. Oh, I love you back. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
All that you have to offer me is your body, for you've been bought at a price, for you are not your own. So in knowing this, present what I've bought to me. By the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Say, God, I'm present. If you're with me, somebody say, I'm present, I'm present, I'm present, I'm present. God, I'm present, I'm present, I'm present, I'm present. God, I'm present. There are times when I'm worshiping and I just let them know, Lord, if you were looking for me, here I am. God, I'm present, I'm present, I'm present, I'm here. I'm locked in, I'm clocked in, I'm, I'm paying attention to you. God, I'm present, I'm present. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That's why I wake up and get out the bed at 2 a.m. Because God says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. A sacrifice costs you something. So if I'm saying, all right, I'm going to be obedient and present my body as a living sacrifice, that means I must feel something right? Uh, you'll hear people talk about in the tithe and the offering. If it doesn't hurt you a little bit, then it's nothing connected to it. Because if it's really a sacrifice, I am going to have a little bit of apprehension. We could absolutely expect for Jesus, despite how fully God he is and was, just to go back to the story, he was yet still man. So we would expect that he'd have a little bit of apprehension going forward to get on the cross. He felt that thing. It was a sacrifice, you're not really sacrificing to God until you are able to say no where you would once say yes, because it's a sacrifice. It looks good. It sounds good. It might even taste good because I've tried it before, but I'm going to actually say no. No is not always easy, but everything that's easy ain't worth it. No is beneficial. My no is my sacrifice. Lord, I would absolutely say yes. I don't know about you, but I'm real with God. Lord, oh my goodness, I would do it. Mm -hmm. I would do it. Lord, if it was not for you, I would do that one. But my no is my sacrifice. Uh, Lord, if it wasn't for you, I would abandon what you've called me to. Because what you called me to, though it's purposeful, is absolutely painful because it's a sacrifice, a dying to the flesh. Absolutely. There's death and life always working in the life of a Christian, of a believer, of people who are of the way. There's death and life always flirting with each other, dancing with each other. Paul would even go on to say that to the people he's impacting, it's life, but to himself, it's death. Present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, 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 separate from the world. You're in it. You got to be in the world to affect the world, but you're not of it. You're holy. So I'm in the world and I might go to the same places as you, but I'm going to look just a little bit different. Yeah, I don't think I'm better than anybody. No, I'm going to go to the movies and see the same film. But there's going to be something about that one over there that's just different because I'm holy. Somebody say, I'm holy. I'm holy. I'm holy. I'm holy. If you're with me, say, I'm holy. I'm holy. I'm just a little bit separate from that. Yeah, I have to be cautious of how long I talk to certain people because, yeah, I listen to that too. And yeah, I laugh at that too. And yeah, I'll go there for a minute, but I'm just visiting. I'm not staying. You got to be careful connecting to people who stay in the place that you're only visiting. Yeah, I visited it. We had a good time listening to the album. We had a good time going out to brunch. But baby, I was just visiting this thing. Don't call me till next month. I don't actually live here. I don't actually stay here. I just tipped my foot on. Hi. Heels on my tip. All right. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's think about the movie Transformers. Optimus Prime looked like a regular semi-truck until he transformed. And when he transformed, was he still looking like a truck or did he look like something completely different? Robin, he looked like something completely different. Thank you, that's good. But when you actually look at him, though he was something different, he was still the same thing. So when the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, it says, present the same body to the Lord as a sacrifice, transforming your mind while yet still being in the same flesh. 
So you're still going to have details that resemble the truck that you once were, but you are no longer the semi truck. You're standing as a fully functional robot. Is it making sense? Be ye transformed, not by anything on the outside, but by what you are experiencing on the inside. You can dress yourself out of it. You can surgery your way out of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you can do, you can get your hair done out of it. You, you can try, it, but nothing's going to really get you out of it until you change the way that you think. Let's get through the text and then we'll go back up. Do not be conformed to this world. Understand that God does not tell you to do anything for no reason. Everything that God tells you to do has a reason connected to it. So present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, has purpose connected to it. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind has purpose connected to it. How do you know, Robin? Because the text continues to say that you might be the one who proves what is good. That you... Having been renewed in your mind might be the example, the proof and the evidence that God is yet still good. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Do not ever get so bobble-headed, bubble-headed, big up here that you forget where you came from down there. Now, I always make this argument as it relates to success in the world. They'll say, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget where you came from. And it's really not something that they're saying to strengthen you. It's really something that they say to break you down, to say, I'm not going there. So as long as I remind you that you used to be here, I'll still have a connection to you. So you got to be able to discern when I'm supposed to remember and when I'm supposed to forget. But it's saying, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget that before I washed you and before I saved you and before I cleansed you, before I put my hand on you, before I decided to say you did not choose me, but I chose you. And before that happened, you were nothing but rags, filthy, filthy rags, dirty rags, dust, literally Bible. He knows I were framed that we are yet but dust. So don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. But to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. <laughs> Everyone's not going to be able to see it the way that you see it because they don't have your faith. Everyone is not going to be able to hear it the way that you hear it because they don't have your faith. Everyone is not going to be able to experience what it is that you are going to experience because they don't have your faith, which is why the Bible tells us don't covet somebody else because you don't even have the faith for what it is that they got. Hear me clearly. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. But absolutely do think of yourself within the measure of faith that God has given you. So when I say that I am uh, 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 an effective communicator, I'm not thinking of myself more highly than I ought to think. I am thinking of myself within the measure of faith that God has given me. I am an effective communicator. When I say things like we're going to get West End Mall in Atlanta, and that is going to be the headquarters for everything the Robin, Bo everything the Robin Boynton. I can speak that way because that's the faith God gave me. But let Joe Schmo come around and hear me talk about West End Mall, then start talking about West End Mall. You are coveting my faith that you don't actually have. Hear me clearly. For as we have many members in one body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the important part. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. This is key. 
all members do not have the same function. So every day you wake up and you're not valuing who you are. Every day you wake up and you are choosing to be somebody else. This is why it's important to stand in your authenticity. Every day that you wake up trying to act like somebody else, dress like somebody else, talk like somebody else, you are not standing in position. If you're with me, if I'm making sense, somebody say, I'm in position. 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 It's getting toasty. Let me crack the window. Oh, Jesus. It's going to be cold in a minute. I see you. There we go. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Make sure I'm not by myself. My abandonment issues didn't heal yet. They're not healed yet. You got to keep praying for me. They'll be gone one day. Right now, I still got them. I got to know you're there. Okay? For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Which means there's a head, hands, fingers on the hands, nails on the hands, which means there's eyes, corneas in the eyes, veins in the eyes, which means the power of death, the power of life and death lies in the tongue. Yet there is so much connected to the tongue. The tongue has nerves on the thing. We've got teeth and the teeth are in the gums and the gums got the body is an intricate, intricate, intricate creation. So just as the body has different parts for its complete functionality. So does the body of Christ. You have to be you for me to be able to be me. That's why every time you guys say, I appreciate you, I appreciate you, I appreciate you too. Because if you're not being you, I can't be me. We all need each other. Yeah, somebody say we need each other. I know we try to act like we don't need people and some of us are forced to have that attitude and it's just a protective measure um, to stop me from walking around vulnerable and getting my feelings heard and all that good, great stuff. But truth be told, we need each other. Yeah, yeah. All of us need someone to have their back. God did not create us to be alone in the garden when Adam uh, named all the animals and he saw all of creation. He said, I'm missing out on something. I'm missing out on something. Uh, we need each other. It's not letting you say it for some reason. Somebody say unity is key. Unity is key. Unity is key. Unity is key. I see you, Spirit Field. Yeah, there we go. Yes. I see you, Cameron. The Bible does say that one is better than two, that two is better than one, and a threefold cord is not easily broken because unity is key. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. You have to be you. That's the only way that a team functions. I do not connect with people that are like me. <laughs> In fact, I honor people that go against me. Now, there's levels to this thing because some people you work with just to do what you told them to do. <laughs> And if you're not doing what I told you to do, you're going to have to go work with somebody else. But then there are some people where you need a difference in opinion. That's how you know the leaders from the followers. You guys are leaders. I'm, I'm talking to a leader. I'm talking to, uh, uh, might as well say it. Can we, somebody say, I'm a leader, I'm a leader, I'm a leader. All of y'all are leaders. But there are followers. And so I don't want to connect with a leader that leads like me. I've got me covered. In fact, I don't have me covered, which is why my partnerships are strategic to balance me out. This is Bible. For as we have many members in one body, which means if I'm struggling in my faith, I don't go to somebody else who's struggling in their faith. I've got to connect with someone who's strong in their faith because I need balance, right? If I'm a finger... I don't need another finger. I need a hand. If I'm a hand, another hand is no benefit to me. These two hands don't help each other. This hand needs an arm. Do you see how it works? Do you see how it works? Do you see how it works? For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body. We're one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Unity is key. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. I don't have your grace. You don't have my grace. 
which is why we cannot sit around and say, well, they got away with it. Yeah, that's because they were graced for it. <laughs> well, it worked for them. Yeah, that's because they were graced for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Baby, you can't just set up and, oh, I'm going to lead out on the floor. I'm going to lead out on the floor. I'm going to lead out on the floor. <laughs> you weren't graced for it. You got to operate in your grace. You got to operate in your grace. All right? Let's leave. Let's leave that on the floor. Having then, I'm purposely repeating it. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. So the grace that God has given you is what produces your gift. So as you walk throughout life, you have to pay attention to the area that God has graced you in. Where has God graced you? It's like Paul. Lord, uh, remove this thorn from me. God said, I I'm not going to do that, but I'll do you one better. I will grace you in the keeping of the thorn. Where are you graced to be sustained? And where are you graced to succeed? I am not going to sit down at a piano and try to play a piano, though my heart desires it. Uh, I I'm not going to do that, at least not on a stage and in front of people, because that's not my grace. But if I just was randomly going to church on a Sunday and they pointed me out in the audience and said, here's a microphone, I would take the microphone because I'm in my grace. Mm, let's move. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, different gifts. So you have to value the gift that God has given you. A lot of times we pray saying, God, if only I had that, or maybe we don't pray it, but we think it. Oh, if only I had that. Oh, if only I had what they had. No, if you had what they had, you wouldn't even know what to do with it. Instead, our solution or our aim should be learning how to value and effectively use what it is that God has given us. Because what he's given you is enough for you to succeed as it relates to your salvation and as it relates to your success. Somebody say, I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. Wisdom is for building. Understanding is to establish a thing. And knowledge adds on to what has been established by the wisdom that built it. Wisdom is for building. Understanding. When I understand what I've built, I'm able to then establish it. That's longevity. And then knowledge is able to just sprinkle, sprinkle. I've got knowledge onto it. All right. So wisdom is what built this ministry. Mm -hmm. Understanding is what's giving the ministry longevity and knowledge is what's saying, all right, let's start an academy. A knowledge is saying, all right, let's do this giveaway. Knowledge is what says, let's expand it and sprinkle, sprinkle. You didn't meet me in L.A. I've never been to L.A. <sighs> so we being many and women having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Hear me clearly. If prophecy, let us prophesy according to our faith. So anytime the spirit of the Lord gives me utterance to prophesy over somebody, it's always going to be abundance. It's always going to be success. It's always going to be breakthroughs and prosperity because that's the faith that I have. My faith is not God is going to give you a car tomorrow. No, my faith is God is going to so increase your income that you can go get a couple cars, pay your tithes, go to church. You can do everything because that's the faith God has given me. God has not given me a fickle faith. God has not given me just an in-the-hand type of faith. God has given me a faith for what he can place inside of your heart. God has given me a faith of generational wealth. Somebody say, I'm generationally wealthy. <laughs> I'm generationally wealthy. I'm generationally, generationally wealthy in faith and by the spirit. And I'm generationally wealthy by my money. The, uh, every time we talk about money, people get scared as if the Bible doesn't say that money solves all things. If it's a thing, money can solve it. So God gives you everything that you need to get money that you can stop praying to him, only asking for what he can place in your hand. And you can start praying prayers like, God, uh, play, uh, uh, heal my heart. So that we're not always going to God asking for stuff. Sometimes we can go to him and just say, God, I thank you that you're yet still good. God, I'm here not because I need a bill paid, not because I need anything done. I don't even need no breakthrough. God, I'm just here because you're good. <laughs> 
So when they say watch out for false prophets, it's people that just say anything that you want to hear. I'm not one to sit up here and say what you want to hear. In fact, I say stuff that makes people quite angry. <laughs> but anytime you speak, it has to come from your heart. Hear me clearly. This is the Bible. We're walking the Texas Bible study, isn't it? Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. It's only what's in your heart that's going to come out of your mouth. Let's move. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who teaches is, uh, I'm good for talking guys ear. I don't want nothing, so I didn't talk to him. Uh, I, 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 my mom said to me, she said, um, all you do is call Jesus's name. I'm sure he is so tired of you. I'm like, I hope he is. <laughs> Maybe he'll respond. <laughs> I'm going to keep on saying it until he gets tired. Lord, you're going to have to respond or I'm going to keep on calling your name. One or the other. <laughs> that, that's it. That's it. That's it. Or ministry, right? A lot of people choose to get into ministry <laughs> at this point, right? Y'all feel me? <laughs> this is real. <laughs> Some people choose ministry. Others ministry choose this. Some people wake up and say, oh, okay, I'm going to do ministry. Other people are woken up and told to get into ministry or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. I was like, you know, uh, I'm going to leave that on the floor. We'll talk about it a different day. Verse eight. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence. Everybody wants to be a leader, but are you being diligent? I would even argue the diligence that you display as a follower determines the level of diligence that you will be equipped with when you are standing as a leader. Are you being diligent with your leadership? Are you being diligent with your leadership and are you being diligent in your leadership? Hmm. He who leads with diligence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. Those who, let's look up the definition. Those who teach are held to a higher standard. Shall I be stressed? Careful and persistent work or effort. Had to Google diligence. See, come on, Google. Careful and persistent work or effort. Are you being careful in your leadership? If you're a leader, it means you have followers. Are you being careful? You're taking care of people. You're watching over people. Are you being careful? If that's not your leadership, even if you're watching over systems, are you being careful with the systems? On whatever side of the spectrum you're on in your leadership, are you adding care? Are you expressing care? Do you actually care? I can't stand working with people that don't care. I'll tell them, quit the job. Literally, quit the job. If you don't like the job, quit the job. But don't work a job that you don't care about and be sloppy, right? Given it shall be given unto you. You get sloppiness in return. Careful and persistent worker effort. Let's move. Are you being, wait, wait, I want to go somewhere else with that. Are you being persistent in your leadership? Are you being persistent? All right. Let, 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 let's look at right here, right here. Persistence. That's there too. Firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Are you able to persevere when it gets a little rough and gets a little tough? Oh, I know they're not talking to me. Oh, I know they didn't just say. If you can't handle that, you'll never handle where God is taking you. Are you being persistent in your leadership? Are you going to continue going no matter what you face? Are you going to keep moving forward despite how hard it may be some days, despite how <laughs> impossible it may seem some days? Are you going to be persistent? It didn't work in the first year. That's right. All right. Are you going to be persistent or did you shut the business down because you experienced failure when the failure was only an opportunity to learn quicker? Mm -hmm. I failed early on. So now because I failed early on, I've got the strategy on how to succeed. But people whine and cry about failures instead of realizing that now I know how to succeed for real because I failed. Are you being persistent? Ah, I, I didn't get the views that I wanted to get. I didn't get the response that I expected to receive. So I'm giving up. 
Or are you going to be persistent? Are you working in your leadership? Everyone wants to be a leader because being a leader sounds good. Mm, they think leadership is glitz and glam. That's only if you're not a real leader. <laughs> leadership is complicated. Because <laughs> if I'm leading you, it means in a, in a way you got to look down to the people that you're leading. Not in a demeaning way, just in a way, shh, I know, just in a way that's like, oh, baby, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. That's where care comes in. It's like, ah. Oh, Leading is a struggle, but I care about you and I love you. Care is what makes the difference. It's the heart that you have in it. Do not think of yourself more highly than you are, but think of yourself within the measure of heart posture God has given you, the measure of faith, the measure of grace God has given you in your heart posture. <laughs> so I can't walk a mile in your sho shoes. I'd break my ankle. I don't have the care that you have. <laughs> That's what a team is for. Because someone else in the team is going to care about what I don't care about. <laughs> Y'all don't need to know me behind the scenes. There are frivolous details I don't care about. <laughs> That's not my business. But someone else is anointed to care about that thing. I realized that I wasn't meant to be a therapist when I recognized I don't really care to go in circles with people. So I said power sessions because I talk to people that are ready to go forward. Lastly, are you working in your leadership? Yes, yes, yes. You got to be working on something. Somebody say, I'm, I'm working it. I'm working it. I'm working it. You got to be working on something in your leadership. Whether you're leading your household, whether you're leading on your job, in whatever capacity that you're leading, you've got to be working on something. Always working on something. I say this. If you fill your schedule up with forward, you, there's no room for backward. Which means then you would succeed at verse one, presenting your body as a living sacrifice because I don't have any room for me to be me because I've submitted me to him because I'm working on something. I'm working on something. I'm working on something. I, I'm able to break out of bad behaviors because I'm working on something. I'm able to break out of self-deprecative thoughts because I'm working on something. I'm able to step outside of self-sabotage because I'm working on something. I'm able to go forward because I'm working on something. I'm no longer stagnant. I'm no longer stuck because I just started working on something. I, what made you start the business? I don't know. I just started working on something. Today, before I was preparing for this live, I didn't do no notes. I said, I'm going to just come straight out the book. And I was starting to write my notes, but then I said, nah, I'm not sensing any notes. And I just started drawing. I just started doing something. I was just working. And so an artist, when they go to paint a picture, they just take some paint and they, and they, do, 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 and they make something. And my cousin showed me how he did his artwork. And I said, that's how it started. I said, yeah, no, I don't draw like you. You're anointed to, to do that thing. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. If God has given you the capacity to show mercy to people, that is a gift. Do you understand how many people are living in chaos in their minds simply because they want to be forgiven? Yeah, everybody really isn't as evil as they seem to be. Everybody is not as evil as they seem to be. Some people are mad at their own selves and wish that they could be forgiven for their mistakes. Wish that they could just hear, I do forgive you and it's going to be all right. If you have the capacity to show mercy, which all of us arguably should have some type of capacity to show mercy because the Bible says to extend mercy as you've received mercy. So if... You are able to show mercy. Do it gladly. I literally had to come to a place of peace with forgiving people. Part of me, the devil wanted to convince me that I'm too f nice, too forgiveful. I don't even know if that's a word. Hurt people hurt people. I, I wanted to convince me that I, I just forgive too much. Like, why am I forgiving? Why am I forgiving? Because I have the capacity to. We're in Romans chapter 12. You're not late. You're right on time. I have the capacity to forgive. Forgiveness is beneficial externally because it sets them free. Can we go there? Should, should we go that deep? When you hold a fence against someone as God's child, it takes a noose and puts it around their neck. I don't know if I should tell y'all this. Do not take my words and twist them. Uh, he that have an ear, let, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. 
when you hold a fence against someone, it puts a noose around their neck because God takes it personal when people attack you. You didn't know that? That's Bible. God takes that thing personal. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, because they thought they were attacking you, but really they were attacking me. If they don't receive you, they don't receive me. So it puts a noose around their neck. So when you withhold forgiveness from one perspective, it may seem good because it's held them up. But from another perspective, the same forgiveness that you do not extend is the same forgiveness that will not be extended to you. The Bible says, do not rejoice over the destruction of your enemies. So I have to be intentional about turning a blind eye to my enemy's destruction. Oh, Lord, I don't know what's going on over there, Lord. Just, just do your thing. I'm paying no mind to it. Because the Bible says that lest he see you rejoicing over the destruction of your enemy and decide to turn and destroy you. Because why would you even have a heart posture that loves to see destruction? I'm forgiving as I've been forgiven because I don't want God to ever hold me up in a noose. I would hate for my eye hold up to be because I held up the forgiveness that somebody else needed. Because we've been commanded to forgive. Forgiving is not an option. It's a command. A lot of the scripture, a lot of the word of God, we take it fine. All right. Uh, we take it and we say it's optional. Scripture is command. Have I not commanded you, saith the Lord, to forgive, to show mercy with cheerfulness, with a smile on your face? I really do feel good when I forgive people. Forgiveness is beneficial externally. Forgiveness is also beneficial, beneficial internally. Because when I forgive, I no longer have to carry that thing in my heart. When I forgive, I can go to sleep at night peacefully. When I really, really, really forgive, I'm able to move forward with a clean heart. When I really, really forgive, not when I fake forgive. They say forgive, but don't forget. Because when you've really forgiven, it may provoke you to go back to the place where you got hurt. But I can forgive you. Not necessarily keep the remembrance of the pain in my mind, but there still has to be some level of recognizing who you are that I do not go back as a fool to the same situation and the same circumstance. I can forgive you, love you, and let you go. Just because I've forgiven does not mean you have to step back into partnership with the thing that hurts you. With the thing that broke you, with the thing that beat you, with the thing that betrayed you, I forgive you and I'm letting you go. My problem has been my forgiveness is so real that I'll run back. But God does not always want you to forgive and go back. Sometimes God just wants you to forgive and go forward. Lord, I hear you. Sometimes God just wants you to forgive and go forward. The forgiveness is realigning you. Hmm. Everything is always connected to more than just self. So the forgiveness is realigning them. But the forgiveness is also setting you up for the success that's to come. You don't want to get in the room that God has anointed you to be in with too much stuff on your back. I've got to have room in my heart for new conversations. I have to have room in my heart for new community. If that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. If I've got to have room in my heart for new love. You have to have room in your heart. Can I be real for new pain? Unless y'all want me to lie. Do y'all want me to be a prosperity preacher? Is that what you want? Oh, you just got to make room for the blessings. No, I'm not going to do that for you. Yeah, there are blessings. But every blessing mm, does have something connected to it. So you have to make sure that there's enough room to handle your next pain point. Why? Why do people commit suicide? Why do people go crazy and lose their mind and explode and snap? Because they didn't make room for the pain that would come. I have so much pain of my past plaguing me, poisoning me. Then when I do go through another battle, I don't even have the capacity for the battle. 
So now I'm cussing everybody out. Now I'm mad at everybody. And they ain't do nothing but bump me in the hallway. They didn't do anything but cut me off. And now I got road rage as if they really did something that terrible. No, they didn't do anything. You just didn't have the capacity for everyday life because life is full of problems every single day. We are waiting to get to heaven and get to that place where there is no battle, where there is no need to try. But every day is a trying experience. We've got to wake up and we've got to go on the world. We've got to try our best. I was frustrated doing this website because the image wouldn't do what I wanted it to do. And if I could really have shown y'all how deep it was, that's why I was up at 12 a.m. last night. But I had the capacity to just keep on going. Yet it was trying. We've got to wake up every day and try. So I just kept trying to get the image right and I got the image right. But we're also tried every day. Spirits, powers and principalities, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We're tried every day by the devil and by ourselves. I don't know about you, but I've tried myself every day. <laughs> I, and don't nobody know me like me. I try myself every day. So I have to forgive and let go that I can have the capacity for myself and everything that I know not of that's going to come and try me. That's why every single day the Bible says to stay on guard. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth on your waist, shod your feet with the preparation that comes from the gospel of peace and the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and stand every single day. Hallelujah. Every day is going to be a battle. Bible would say that if you're standing, be careful that you don't fall because every single day is a battle. Understanding this, right? that every day is a battle, you then have two options. I have an option to rise or I have an option to fall. I can either lose my mind over the fact that life is an everyday battle or I can just learn how to get with it. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't use that one as an example. When people are boxing in a ring, their opponent may be stronger than them. Their opponent may be better than them. Their opponent may be more. I can use Iron Man as an example. When he was fighting Captain America, Captain America was doing his big one. Captain, the, this was the movie, The Winter Soldier. They were fighting, 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 fighting. Shout out to Iron Man. I cried when he died. Fighting, fighting, fighting. And Captain, Captain America was tearing him up. He put his shield in him and all this stuff was happening. Instead of giving up, Tony Civil War. Thank you, Cameron. Tony stepped back. Let himself get beat up for a minute, recognizing that the battle's gonna be tough, and learn how to fight back. I hope I hope I can say it like I know it. I hope I can say it like 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 I'm trying to explain it with this example because this is perfect. He went into it expecting it to be a little complicated, but he never expected it to be that complicated. But he was ready for a battle. While he was in the battle. When it was taking him out, he number one, did not give up. And number two, he didn't get sporadic just trying to do anything. He stepped back for a minute and he started paying attention. See, when things start going crazy in life, what do we do? We try to move too fast and figure everything out. No, 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 baby, just rest. Just relax. Wisdom is slow. Wisdom is peaceful. Wisdom is just, hmm. He stepped back. And he, well, rather the AI system, but we're just going to call it him. He built the system. Started analyzing the battle. That's good right there. Almost ran. He started analyzing the battle. God is trying to give you strategy that's going to equip you to succeed in what you're in. But you've got to be willing to step back and analyze the situation. This is not a battle that we can just throw punches aimlessly. That ain't gonna get you there. You see people fight, they'll be just trying to win a battle. No, 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 no. But a real fighter steps back and they square up and they analyze their opponent and they fight with strategy. This is why we're talking about precision. The first course and the first book that is gonna be released on therobinboynton.com is about living a 1% lifestyle, living a lifestyle in the 1%. I haven't really decided on the title, but that's what it's about. 
learning how to live a life with precision, live a life with strategy because we can talk it, but seldom do we actually walk it. Uh, I'm going to scope the scenery out. <laughs> See, you don't even know when I'm coming. Bow. <laughs> All right, Romans chapter 12. Let's move. <laughs> How are you leading? With diligence. Let love, verse 9. I love you back. Be without hypocrisy. Love, I'm going to come from two perspectives, is a thing of reciprocity, but love is also sometimes a one-sided street. I don't love you based on how you can love me. I love you because I love you. And I'm not loving you, or rather, I'm not not loving you, expecting you to love me. I'm loving you just because I choose to love you, whether you love me or not. Am I banking it plain? Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And cling to what is good. 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Be kind to one another. Be affectionate to one another. My grandma... And see, it, one day, the Lord keep her, y'all will meet her, but it's only going to be on an in-person thing, never through social media. She'll tell you. I'll be kissing on her. <laughs> We're just kissing on her. She tried to put her hand on my face and said, no, don't touch my face. No, you're going too far. Uh, I can't, I'm not about to say her name. You're going too far now. But it's always going to be affection there. I'm going to hug you. I'm going to kiss you. I'm going to let you know that you're loved. There's affection there. I always high five people in conversations. Baby, y'all ain't met me, but you'll see we're in Romans chapter 12. I'm a high fiver. If we're having a good conversation or if you said something amazing, if I see that you are make, taking steps forward to your greater, I'm going to say high five. Affection. When we dap people up, I'm not an expert on it, but I do know something simple is boom on the back. It's affection. Brotherly love because we are all brethren. Yes, ladies, I'm talking to you too. Um, it's not about gender. We are all brethren. We are all brothers and sisters, yes. But the Bible's saying brethren, speaking to brothers and sisters. We are all brethren. So brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. If we all loved each other as a brother. Yeah, somebody needs a hug or a kiss blown at them. It's about agape love. I've been hearing that word a lot lately. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Which means if I really love you, I'll sacrifice myself for you. If you really, really, really love somebody, you'll go without. I love you enough to suffer while you don't. You can have it. You need it. I got you. Because I love you. Not lagging in diligence. We talked about that. Diligence. Careful, persistent worker effort. Love is intentional. When we talk about God's love and there being nothing that can separate us from his love, it's because love is intentional. 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 Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing, continuing steadfastly in prayer. That's where we fall short, but we're going to go forward and come backward. Distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. And we failed right there. That's it. Y'all don't want to hear no more. We failed right there. The word agape sounds interesting. That's how I feel every time I hear it also. But agape love means wide open, especially with surprise or wonder. That's not the right one. Sorry. The theology definition of agape is Christian love. 
especially as distinct from erotic love or emotional affection. Agape love is the love that's specific to us believers. A communal meal of yeah, a communal meal in token of Christian fellowship as held by early Christians in commemoration of the Last Supper. Agape love. It's Christian love. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Truth be told, I don't I don't, I don't, what you call it? Yeah, you can't even spell, Corday. Baby, I'm praying for you. God bless you. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. I don't know you're saved by your tongues. I know you're saved when you can love somebody that has never, ever, ever loved you. I know you're saved when you can look your enemy in the face, smile at them, and say, I love you. That's what Jesus asked Peter. Mm. I know you're saved. That's good, Spirit Phil. I know you are saved when you are able to continue being a light despite the amount of darkness that surrounds you. I know that you're really walking with Jesus when you have every reason to go off. You got to pass. It, 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 you can do it and you choose not to. <laughs> Thank you for backing me up. I love y'all. And you choose not to. I could do you, but I won't. Not necessarily because I don't want to. But I presented my body as a sacrifice. So though I may want to, there's a better word against that word that says to bless you. So I say, God bless you. Have a good day. You know, I want you to know that I love you, but I don't have time for this right now. That's me. I'm learning how to communicate that effectively. Like, you know what? I want you to know that I love you and I value you and I appreciate our time together. But as of right now, I really just don't have the capacity for this conversation, but I would love to pick it up at another time. God bless you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Just because someone else is going through a hard time and you're not doesn't mean to shut them out till they get to a good time. Be there for each other. Weep with those who weep, but also be happy for each other. Rejoice with those who rejoice. You're using that? I know that's right. What? You got accepted into the school? Congratulations. You got the position? Let's go. That's awesome. Your business did what? That's amazing. What the doctors say? You're healed? Oh my gosh. Because I'm rejoicing with those that are rejoicing. And the praise that I extend to them puts me in position to receive a blessing. Because when praises go up, blessings come down. <laughs> rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. When you set your mind on high things, you say, I'm too good to go there. I'm too good for that. I like essential water. But baby, if I ain't go to the store and all I have is this good and gather this good and gather, good target water, water, I'm going to drink that good and gather. Associate with the humble. So just because I got healed, delivered, and set free doesn't mean that I'm going to disconnect myself from the world that yet still leads, needs me. I'm going to make sure that I'm still connected to the people, never too good, that I'm going to make sure that I'm still connected to the people that need me most. This is why the Bible says associate with the humble, humble, the people that are in need of you. We're going to walk it some more. Just keep walking with me. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Uh, I pat myself on the block 
I, I pat myself on the back and all that good, great stuff. I, I pat, pat, pat myself on the back for the areas that God has equipped me to succeed and anointed me to operate in. But I never proclaim to be wise. I never proclaim to know it all. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Repay no one evil for evil. And that's our challenge. You need some motivation for your mental health? Go to therobinboynton.com and join the wait list. That's going to be everything that you need to succeed and stay connected to this entire experience. Mm, repay no one evil for evil. And that's where we trip and we stumble. Is repaying other people. How would you sleep at night if you knew that God was paying back your enemies and it was none of your business? How would you sleep at night if you really let God be God? I don't think about my enemies. This is so real to me. When people ask about certain situations and circumstances, I really have to think about it and remember, I don't think about my enemies. It is not my business to pay them back, nor their paying back. It's not my business. Revenge is not my, por it's not my business. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, and here's where it's challenging again. If your enemy is hungry, feed them. Hmm, I could tell stories about that one. We'll save them for another day. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. I don't know you're saved until you're feeding your enemies. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, your goodness provokes God's <laughs> justness. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. So just keep being good. Just, just keep doing good. God will take care of the rest. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Somebody say, I'm an overcomer if you're with me. Do not be overcome by evil. Overcome evil with good. Martin Luther King would say it like this. Darkness can't drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So if we're ever going to overcome and get rid of evil, we've got to just keep being good. Let's read it from this one. Amplified. As a matter of fact, let's put this screen over here. You ready? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, giving every ounce of yourself over to God is your sacrifice. Lord, you can have my head. You can have my heart. Lord, you can have my body. Holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually. As believers, we are always in a constant state of development. As believers, as leaders, as people of faith and people who are walking in abundance of fact, we have to always stay in a state of development, right? I cannot lead anyone to a place that I have not gone. And if I only go to here, I can't take anyone there. There was this quote or somebody said it. I can't remember. They said a weak leader, well, a strong follower will either go beyond a weak leader or a strong follower will provoke a weak leader to become stronger. I have to constantly be developing to keep on pulling people forward. 
Uh, can I be real with you? Let's see how let's see how far we're gonna go with this. I started paying attention to my messages, and there was a time when I was trying to reach everybody, and so I would make them simple, and I would bring them too far down in simplicity that the potency of God's word was being subtracted. I said I can't reach everybody. I'm not going for the high schooler. I'm not going for the middle schooler just yet. The time will come. I've got to make sure that I'm able to reach people that have doctorates, which we do. I've got to be able to reach people that have bachelors and masters, which we do. I've got to be able to communicate with doctors and lawyers, and I've got to be able to communicate with entrepreneurs, business owners, content creators, people who are on the other side of their thing, still in the thing, and yet entering into the thing. I've got to stay in a state of development as a leader. Are we talking about me or are we just painting pictures of me to really shadow you? You have to stay in a constant state of progression. A constant state of moving forward to the next thing. Yeah, Walmart changed its entire system. There's even talk about uh, all of their stores becoming something like delivery hubs and for their online shopping. And they're going to be something like Amazon. I heard that when I was an employee there back in the day. All of these businesses shifting the way that they show up. Why? Because you have to always stay in a state of progression. Progress. I'm moving forward. Productivity is something that you can hold in your hand. I'll even give you the definition. I'll give you the definition. I kind of want to touch this. I wish the screen was touching. Anyway. The effectiveness, productivity, is the effectiveness of productive effort, especially in industry, as measured in terms of the rate of output per input. Meaning I cannot say that I'm being productive if I have not produced anything to prove it. Ah, uh, it's two ways this can go, right? Productive is me sometimes doing nothing and just taking a moment to meditate, right? Good. Productive is sometimes reading a book. That's good too. Productive is maybe I went for a walk and that's good too. But productive is rather instead... What did you actually produce today? You read the book, great. What did you produce out of what you read? All right, I ask people all the time that I'm closely connected to. You read the text, that's great. You studied the text, that's great. Now, what did you get out of the text that you are now going to walk in? What is the reading producing? Production is something that I can see based on what I put into that thing. So when my business is not yet successful, when the content is yet not getting enough engagement, what did you put into that thing? How much time did you spend studying for the test when you you got an E and you're mad at the E, but how much time did you put in to the thing? Should I tell my brother's business? I'll tap him on the shoulder. Bro, I love him. He's my favorite person and he's smart. He don't do his homework. So he over here surprised about these grades. And I said, do you think the grades magically happen? You weren't productive. You didn't do your homework. You didn't produce anything. So do not get mad at the results of your lack of production. Are we talking about Noah, my brother? Are we talking about my brother? Or are we talking about us? We cannot possibly get mad at our lives when it's not what we desire for it to be, when we are lacking production. I cannot get frustrated at the level that I'm living on, at the bills that cannot be paid when I'm lacking production. When there is nothing but opportunity around us in this day, in this age, and in this generation where people are becoming millionaires overnight. Baby, I, I, I was recording a YouTube video about me. Um, I recorded a YouTube video today, right? Me building this website and us having a conversation. I got a notification on my Robin Hood. It said Bitcoin is now at 44000 and I keep getting these notifications and I'm thinking that it's Robin Hood telling me that my current balance is now forty four thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> I'm laughing because I, it really be catching me by surprise. I said, hold on, Lord Jesus, I do know you to be a provider. Right. <laughs> but it's just telling me that the price of Bitcoin has changed. And while I look at the price of Bitcoin going down to 44000 and I'm just like, oh, OK, that's good and that's great. I'll just keep investing my little couple dollars in there. There's someone else that jumped on that opportunity and bought it at that price, actually bought a few at that price. With all of this stuff existing in this world right now, what reality do you want to live in? 
Do you want to live in the reality that you are living check to check? Do you want a reality of poverty or reality of prosperity? Do you want a reality that is broken spiritually or do you want a reality where you are healed in the spirit? All of what you desire your reality to be is based on the input, the output that you live in is based on the input. So the Bible would even go to say it like this in Proverbs chapter 24. I do believe that you cannot reap what you don't sow. It says it like this. In fact, it is Bible study, isn't it? Uh, it says that the lazy man does not plow because it's winter. And then he's mad and starts begging during harvest season when he never planted anything to begin with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Going you to learn to trade stocks and forex and make that residual income. Absolutely. Whatever that looks like for you, ask yourself, are you being productive in your daily life? Literally. Somebody say, I'm productive, if you're with me. Are you being productive? I said last night, was that last night? I think it was last night. I went live at like 11 p.m., 12 a.m. because I was just up here working. And I said, all right, uh, if you're up, what are you doing? Are you being productive while you're up or are you just up for no reason? Production can be God is calling you to prayer. Production can be God is calling you to study. Production can be God is calling you to work on your business. I'm one of those people. I'm a late night worker. I just be working, working, working. Shout out to Rihanna. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. But be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually. That's what took me out of there. As you mature spiritually, as you are going up in levels in Jesus Christ, I'm maturing spiritually. So the faith I had before is not the faith that I have now. The way that I thought yesterday isn't the way that I think today because we're maturing Somebody say, I'm maturing, I'm maturing, I'm maturing, I'm maturing. When I was a child, I thought like a child, I spoke like a child, but now I'm mature enough to know that nothing happens unless I make it happen. And in fact, if I just start moving my feet a little bit, God will back me up with a lot of it. I'm maturing. So I'm not crying and crying over and over again, thinking God cares about my many tears. No, if you sow in tears, you'll reap in joy. But God does not take your tears for the lack of your obedience. That was somebody's business. God does not want your tears in exchange <laughs> for your lacking obedience. <laughs> We're maturing. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. By the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. That's good. So that you may prove, not necessarily to other people, but I'm just trying to prove it to myself. I really don't care what other people say about me. I'm just trying to go against what I've said about myself. Uh, it's not that I really care if people think that I can't do it. I'm just trying to prove to myself that I could do it all along. My only competition is the man in the mirror. I don't know who said it, but I just heard it. I I'm only focused on beating the lesser version of myself. The Robin Boynton.com, soon to be Boynton Academy in the transition of transitions. It's about introducing leaders to the best version of themselves. I'm in competition with nobody. I'm in a category all by myself. You're competing against me, operating outside of your grace. <laughs> I'm not in competition, <laughs> except for with myself. So you get growth. You get breakthrough. You get increase when every day, this is, oh, this is going there. This is going there. This is going there. I'm going to add, when every day, do you see how the necessity of this course Every day when you wake up living a life in the 1%, a 1% lifestyle of precision aimed at just being 1% better than the day before, you are proving for yourselves what the will of God is for your life. I'm not proving it to anybody else. My 1% lifestyle is about me proving it to me that I actually can do everything that God has created me to do. My greatest, greatest breakthrough in this season is believing that I really can do anything that I put my mind to. That's real. I'm not just playing. 
that's my greatest thing in this season. If God don't do nothing else for me, I'm grateful for the fact that I can actually, and that I'm actually believing I can do anything I put my mind to. You can hear it in the way that I talk. You can see it in the way that I walk. If you really got to analyze me, I really just believe that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that marvelous are the workings of God. And if I be a working of God, I must be marvelous too. I'm just really believing that I can do all things. And so I broke out of the box that I placed myself in. It was never about the people that tried to put me in a box. It's about the boxes that you put yourself in. So I'm coming up against myself because that's my greatest competition. What the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and his purpose for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, for you. For by the grace of God given to me, I say to everyone of you, not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has apportioned to each a degree of faith and a purpose designed for service. Somebody say, I have purpose. Somebody say, I have purpose. I have purpose. I have purpose. If you're with me, if it's making sense, if it's good, if this is good for you, if this is good for food. If this is something that you're like, I might have to rewatch this again. Somebody say, I have purpose. And a purpose designed for service. I have a question for you now. Who are you serving? Everybody wants to be a leader. But did not Jesus show us that true leadership serves? True leadership is a service. I'm serving you. <laughs> Who are you serving? How are you serving? In business, all right. You started a business. How is your business serving? What does it mean to serve? It means to step outside of yourself for somebody else. It means to step outside of yourself for somebody else. I'm serving. I would rather not do it. I would rather be asleep, but I'm serving. Amazon was the most qualified. I, I was overqualified for the job, but I was just serving. God, this is where you have me right now. I'm just serving. All right. And I only worked at Wendy's for, for a day or two days and they put me on grill. It exposes you. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna come right back to that. And they put me on the grill. I don't know about you, but I don't seem like a grill type of person. I do have my limits on what I do. You know, I'm about to get and mess up my skin on that grill. And so I quit. <laughs> one day later, but came to find out it was just a, an opportunity because um, a, a lifelong friend of mine went through a terrible time and needed a job. And this job sustained them through so much stuff. So it was really just a connection to get them a job there. Uh, yeah, it wasn't working for me. They, I quit. I quit. Mm -hmm. And they wanted me back so bad. But don't put me on grill when you know good and well I belong in customer service. Come on now. Common sense. It exposes you. Yeah, Christopher, get out of my head. The greatest among you shall be the least. It exposes you. Serving exposes you. How well can you serve? If you can serve well, you can lead well. But if you can't serve well, I wouldn't trust your leadership because you don't have the heart to understand what people need. Leadership is not something that's detached from the people and I'm up at the top of the podium. If I'm leading a people, I have to be connected to the people. So Jesus is washing the feet of the disciples and they said, Lord, no, you can't wash my feet. And Jesus had to tell them, baby, if I wash your feet, if I make you dinner, if I put socks, if I dress you head to toe, the student is never greater than the teacher. Mm. It doesn't matter how low you go when you're a leader. When you are really a leader, nothing can taint your leadership. So sometimes, truth be told, I just go low to show you how, how, I, how high I actually am. 
<laughs> That's me. I'm sorry. Sometimes I play games. I, I, I go low just to show you how high I am. So I'll serve you and let you say whatever you want. I love you back. So I'll smile while you're saying hurtful things and I'll let you go and do craziness just to show you that no matter how low I go, baby, I'm still higher than you. I'm sorry, that was therapy. That was just a, that was just a little bit of therapy. Because no matter how low you go, you are yet still high. Because being high, seated in high places, being a part of a royal priesthood, sitting on a high throne, is based on your perspective, your perception, and your belief system. In you and not on you. Uh, that sounds like the title of the next message and you can go ahead and preach it it's in me baby it's not on me i like that somebody says it's in me it's in me it's in me what is it everything that you need to succeed is in you everything that you need to prosper is in you lord where are you i'm in you mm -hmm. for we have this treasure in an earthen vessel we're almost gone. For just as in one physical body, mm -hmm, let me not act like I can't, I can, uh -huh, uh -huh, we have many parts and these parts do not all have the same function or special use. So we who are many are nevertheless just one body in Christ. And individually, we are parts one another, one of another, mutually dependent on each other. We are all depending on each other. If I see God do it for you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can believe God will do it for me. <laughs> if God healed you, I don't have a doubt that God will heal me. We're connected. So if my faith is falling... I need you to help pick me up. The Bible would even go on to say that you are spiritual to restore a brother, restore the brethren if they have fallen into any trespass because we're dependent on each other. I'm walking it in the amp and then we're leaving. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them accordingly. If someone has the gift of prophecy, let him speak a new message from God to his people. Everybody, nah, nah, I'm gonna leave that alone. In proportion to the faith possessed, we already walked that as clear as day. If service in the act of serving, everybody does not have the anointing to serve in every capacity. There are some areas of service that I can only serve in for so long, then it's like, all right, too much. But you are anointed to serve in a particular area. And you have the capacity for that thing. A lot of people don't serve because they're just serving in the wrong area. No, what area has God anointed you to serve in? So I'm not going to stand at the door and be no greeter because e even when I'm holding the door, ladies, I love you. But after about 10 or 20 ladies that pass through, one of y'all going to have to grab this dog because I'm not about to stand holding this dog for the whole village. This is real, actually. I'm not graced to hold it that long. I'm not going to apply for that ministry. I'm not going to be a greeter at the door. How do you know? Because it's in your heart. It's all about getting to the place of authenticity in who you are. And when you really go on the journey of Christ discovery, which then provokes you into self-discovery, and you come into alignment with yourself, what you like and what you don't like, and you stop cold switching, and you break out of people pleasing, and you stop living your life for somebody else, and you only live your life for God and yourself, then you start to clearly know who you are and even who you are not. And that comes along the way. That's about walking with God. It's a journey. So now I know what I don't like. Now I know what I can't take. So when I use the example of telling people I love you, but I don't have the capacity for this conversation, I learned that I used to take everybody's trauma dumps and it would then leave me frustrated. I don't have the capacity because I've learned myself now. So if I allow you to continue doing what I know I don't like, I am then invalidating my own emotions and breaking my own boundaries. And baby, I love myself too much to do that. I love you, but I also love me and I can't love you if I don't love me. So I've got to make sure that I'm in tune with who I am so that I can naturally cover myself. 
So because I'm on this journey of Christ discovery and self-discovery, I now know. Uh, I mean, I know everything, but I know that ain't for me right there. I don't eat spicy food. And if I do, well, sometimes I'm stupid. <laughs> I can use a perfect example. I ordered some pho. This was like a month or two ago now. <laughs> and while I was ordering it, chili oil sounded delicious. I was hungry. I see you, Vanessa. It's good to see you. It's, it, it sounded delicious, right? Chili oil. I was like, oh, and you know it's pho, so you can put a whole bunch of stuff in it. And I just was excited and hungry. Why I ordered chili oil, who knows? Because I know me enough to know that it wasn't going to be good. So what happened was, <laughs> the food came and I tasted the chili oil. Burnt my mouth off just to taste. The chili oil is so only a little bit in it, though. That's what I thought, though, right? And so I thought that I poured a little bit and the little bit didn't look like enough because I didn't know how potent chili oil really was. But I should have knew because when I took the cap off, it burnt my nose and I put too much. Yet I knew myself enough to know that that wouldn't be good for me. So then I was in a situation of having to go and get some milk really quickly from Kroger and I'll leave that story alone. The point is I would have never had the experience on the back end if I honored myself on the front end. Knowing I don't eat spicy foods, knowing I can't handle that heat, I'm going to honor myself in the beginning and not put myself into that situation and circumstance so I do not have an unfavorable ending. I hope I put a pin in that thing. Moving. And we're almost done. <laughs> if service in the act of serving. So as you come into alignment and with who you are, Christ discovery, self discovery, because you don't want to discover a you that's not in Christ, right? So it's Christ discovery, self discovery. Then I know what I should and should not be doing. Or he who teaches in the act of teaching. Or he who encourages in the act of encouragement. He who gives with generosity. Generosity, generosity. So if you're going to be a giver, don't give hatefully, give generously. He who leads with diligence. You're not late, you're right on time. With diligence. He who shows mercy and caring for others, do it with cheerfulness. We're almost done. Love is to be sincere and active. The real thing without guile and hypocrisy. Hate what is evil. Yeah, I can love the good in you, but hate the evil in you at the same time. That's wisdom. So a lot of people have to endure the evil of a person and start rejecting the person when that's not what Christ called us to do. Christ called us to be discerning enough to recognize the evil, but wise enough to not respond to the evil. Because though there's evil inside of it, there's still a person on the outside of it. And if I'm only aimed at attacking the evil, I'll never actually deliver you because you'll kill the good along with the evil. Bible, let the wheat and the tear grow together and then there will be an appropriate time to separate them. But if I see the evil and start killing everything, then the wheat will die along with the tear. Now I've got no harvest. I'll leave that on the floor. We'll talk about it another day. Hate what is evil. Detest all ungodliness. Do not tolerate wickedness. Hold on tightly to what is good. Be devoted to one another with authentic brotherly affection as members of one family. Give preference to one another in honor, never lagging behind in diligence, a glow in the spirit, enthusiastically serving the Lord, serving the Lord with gladness, 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 constantly rejoicing in hope because of our confidence in Christ. Yeah, constantly rejoicing in hope because of our confidence in Christ. I almost stopped when I was reading it out of the New King James Version because rejoicing in hope is rejoicing in our expectation of Christ to come. Our expectation of eternal life, our expectation of, of, of the redemption of our bodies, the saving of our souls, the reuniting of us with Christ in heaven, that is us rejoicing in hope. Steadfast and patient in distress, steadfast, immovable, always abounding, and patient in distress, long suffering, devoted to prayer, continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and even strength, contributing to the needs of God's people, pursuing the practice of hospitality because God has put us here to be change agents. Somebody say, I'm a change agent. I'm a change agent in my household. I'm a change agent in my job. I'm a change agent in the marketplace. I am a change agent. 
Uh, you don't want me coming if you don't want it a bit changed. I'm not coming to go along with broken systems. That's why a lot of people don't like me. I'm coming along to change something here. Some people will try to tell you, no, 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 don't change it. Stop trying to change everything. God has called me to change it. You just got to make sure that it's what you're anointed to change. Don't be trying to pick up side missions and projects that you're not anointed for. But what you've been anointed to do is change the room. All right, let's keep it cool. You've been anointed to change the room. Why would you go along with a broken system? I don't care who you are. If the thing is broken, I'm not going along with brokenness. <laughs> I would say that you're a fixer, but I'm going to leave that on the floor. I would say we're fixers in Christ Jesus. The world has been submitted to bondage, not willingly, but in expectation for us to come as the deliverers, as the fixers in the situation. I'm going to leave that on the floor. 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 But I know you're anointed by how the room changes when you walk away. I know that you're anointed by how the room shifts when you walk into it. I know that you're anointed by how people's language switches when they get around you. Oh, I can't wait to meet y'all in person so you can see. I know you're anointed by your impact. Somebody say, I'm impactful. I'm impactful. I'm impactful. I used to want to make people feel comfortable. So I say, no, no, you don't have to switch your language because they knew that I was in ministry. Now, no, 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 go ahead and get that language right when I step in the room. Yes, because I'm impactful. You're supposed to clean it up a little bit because I'm anointed. The anointing is not supposed to make people complacent. The anointing is supposed to make people uncomfortable and pull them higher. I'm anointed when I can't help but pull people higher, higher, higher. If you talk to me that's too long, you're going to get agitated because you're going to have to come up higher or you're going to be left lower. Because the anointing is <laughs> an agitating type of thing. <laughs> Let's go. I'm feeling like I gave everything that I need to. Thank you, Jesus. We're almost done. Oh, hallelujah. Fourteen and we're leaving to twenty-one. Bless those who persecute you, who cause you harm or hardship. Bless and do not curse them. I know it's hard, but baby, bless, 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 and do not curse them. We got enough curses going around here. Somebody got to bless. 15, rejoice with those who rejoice, sharing others' joy. And weep with those who weep, sharing others' grief. Calling on Jesus all of a sudden. You know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> Something about tears and lack of obedience. We cry, God, I'm sorry, God, I don't know what I'm doing. And... God doesn't really care so much about all of these tears. God wants us to be honest. God wants us to be real. God wants us to, I'm sorry, I'm actually just distracted with doing what I was doing. God wants our obedience. God wants us to make decisions that catapult us and connect us to our greater Tears are not equivalent to decisions. So I can cry about how horrible my life is and how many terrible decisions I've made. That does not matter if you're not gonna move on from that moment making better decisions. So God does not want your tears in exchange for your lack of obedience. God wants your obedience. Be obedient. Don't try to cry your way out of obedience, right? And so moving. Rejoice with those who rejoice sharing others. Here, weep with those who weep, sharing others' griefs. That's Bible. I'm going to weep with you and I'm going to share your grief. Yet if you just stay there too long, baby, we're going to have to move about this thing. The Bible says that there are some times you're going to have to snatch people out of the fire. Baby, I'm going to cry with you. I'll dry your eyes and I'll pray with you. But if you've been there too long, now I'm coming to snatch you out the fire because I ain't going to burn with you. All right. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, conceited, self-important, exclusive. That part. We've got to be confident. The Bible commands us to be confident for our confidence comes from Christ. But if all of us are confident, nobody would be arrogant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to leave that one on the floor. I want to leave that on the floor. We'll unpack that another time. If all of us were confident, no one would be arrogant. There would be no reason because I can't think I'm better than you. You already think that you are enough. Confidence is not thinking that you're better than the next person. Confidence is just knowing that you are valuable as God has created you to be. I'm confident, not arrogant. Somebody say, I'm confident. You could even say, I'm confident and not arrogant if you want to make it clear. I'm confident, not arrogant. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I just know that I'm good at this. 
I don't think I'm better than you. I just know that I do this very well. And to act like I don't would be me not even standing in alignment with God. God's like, I anointed you to do that. Why are you acting like you can't do it? <laughs> That's not humility. Acting like you're not who you are. <laughs> Confident, not haughty. <sighs> do not be haughty, conceited, self-important, and exclusive. Hmm, don't be exclusive. All right, Bible. But associate with humble people, those with a realistic self-view. Wait a minute now. If we dive into the Amplified, it says those with a realistic self-view, which means you don't have to hang with people that don't know their worth. Just make sure that you are not hanging with people that overvalue themselves. I look at some people and I say, you really think you are that baby? If only you knew, right? Let's not, let's not go there. That'll unpack something. <laughs> people who have a realistic self-view. So that we're all viewing ourselves and our strengths and in our weaknesses. That we as friends balance each other out. Okay? I'm in verse, finna be 17, but we're closing 16. Do not overestimate yourself. Never repay anyone for evil for evil. Take thought for what is right and gracious and proper in the sight of everyone. Somebody say, I'm a thinker. I'm a thinker. Hear me clearly. This is going to be imperative for your entire life. I'm a thinker. This is your most powerful weapon. Your mind. The power of life and death lies in the tongue, but how can I speak what I haven't thought? I'm a thinker. I said before, I'm giving him credit one more time that I'm a coin it as my own. That's what the rule is. Bishop Jake said, a lion's roar. The human mind is a lion's roar. A lion's roars to show you how powerful he is. A lion roars to declare his strength. Humans don't have a roar, but we have a mind. Baby, I don't fight. I think. I'm a thinker. That's what makes the difference. Can I go just a tad deeper? Not too deep, but just somewhere. I want to get over here for a minute. If you are a thinker, you will never be overworked. People who don't know how to think have to use their hands. When you know how to think, you use your mind. The most successful people don't use their hands. They use their mind. They use their head. People who are making six figures in a company are not paid for what they can do with their hands. They're paid for what they do with their head. Jeff Bezos will go on to say that he sleeps eight hours a day and he schedules his most important meetings after 10 a.m., I believe it is, after 10 a.m. Why? Because he's up and he's ready. His brain is functioning in a good place. He's eaten, he's drank his water for the day and he's able to make good decisions. He says plainly, that people in those positions, executive positions, are only paid to make a couple important decisions per year. But he has to make sure that the couple important decisions that he does make, that he's in the best shape to make them. Because he used his head. In the beginning of your entrepreneurship journey, you're going to have to use your hands. You'd be a fool to believe that. But as you grow and develop, the goal is to not always have your hand in your business. The goal is to have your head in the business. I'll leave that on the floor. You're going to have to get that on therobinboyden.com. Uh, 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 never repay anyone evil for evil. Take thought for what is right and gracious and proper in the sight of everyone. Always be thinking as a leader. In leadership, you always have to be thinking. I'm sorry, leadership is not this 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 aimless thing. You can't always go off of how you feel in leadership, right? You got to think your way through. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. I aim to be at peace with everyone. I'll apologize if I got to apologize. I'll take accountability where I got to take accountability. I will own that thing where I got to own that thing. Because I make it my point to be at peace with Always. If Pond, 19, and we're almost done. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Believe the way open for God's wrath and his judicial righteousness. For it is written in scripture, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For by doing so, this you will reap. Burning coals on his head. And then I think the most powerful text, most powerful verse of it all is this. We've been in Romans 12. Do not be overcome and conquered by evil, 
but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Somebody say, I'm good. If this was good, somebody just say, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Then I've got a better one for you. If this has been a Bible study of Bible studies for you, if you actually got something good out of this, somebody say God is good. All right. As many people said, I'm good. It better be more people that say God is good because God is surely gooder than you. He's gooder than me, too. God is good. Yes, he is. In fact, I'm only good because God is good. <laughs> If there's no God connected to me, I'm nothing but bad. Maybe I'm good because God is good. Okay, so when you see me, see Jesus, all right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God is good, isn't he? Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our Bible study for today. Everything as it relates to my ministry is linked in my bio. If you want to sow into this message, sow into this ministry, tithe into this ministry, you can do all those things linked in the bio. But I want to talk to you about something specific therobinboynton.com. If this live experience has been beneficial to you, I want you to go on therobinboynton.com and join the wait list so that you can be the first to know when we launch because the content I've been giving on TikTok Live is going to be vanishing. It's disappearing. Not going away, but going somewhere else. TheRobinBoynton.com is the place that we are going to connect and engage with each other. Um, it's going to be teaching. It's going to be training. It's going to be community. Um, am I starting a class experience? Get out my business. Yes, I am jazzy. And it's going to be so amazing. It's going to be so amazing. And so as of right now, the wait list is open. It's not a wait list like you're waiting for something. It's a wait list. You're just waiting for the actual website to launch. Okay. So join that list if you want to join that list. And I think it's going to be absolutely amazing and I'm excited for it. And so, um, lives, is there a fee? No, there's no fee to, to be on the robinboynton.com. No, there's no fee, but these are going to be courses and these are going to be books. And so of course, courses and books are things that you pay for, right? When you value your expansion, you sow into your expansion, right? The same applies to ministry. When you value the word that has come forth from God, you sow into that word. And so people who are intentional about building themselves, I'm going to give you everything that you need and walk with you step by step to that place called your best self. And so just join. Good. I look forward to connecting with you all. Um, the live is finished. You missed it. That's okay. It's going to be reposted. It's going to be reposted. It's going to be reposted. Will there be live interaction in general um, as far as TikTok or there? TikTok, yes, we're still going to go live there. Um, am I still doing a book club? Yes. And the books will be the books that are also going to be released in the curriculum. And so um, I thought about that. I'm like, we can actually do a book club with this material. Now we can do other books as well, but I think it will be very effective for us to include some of these books in the book club. And so if you are interested in joining the book club, all of this is going to happen through therobinboyton.com. So don't look for the book club here on Tiki Tiki Tok Tok. You should write a book already done and doing that's going to be on the robinboyton.com the books will be on sale yes the books will be on sale i said the proof is in the pudding right when people launch things they try to you know they got to pull people in to try to prove how valuable the stuff is baby we've been doing it over and over again the content is valuable all right so if you want to take it to the next level that's going to be available for you to do that the next bible study would be tomorrow 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 i believe so yes and so um if you guys want to stay connected, this is how you're going to stay connected. Because the everyday on tick tock tick tick tock 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 is disappearing. But that's so that we can show up in other ways and in other areas. And it'll also, you know, be a better experience. There will be no distractions. It's always 6 p.m. Always 6 p.m. There will be no uh, Eastern time, that is, sorry. No distractions. It'll be an environment full of leaders, full of people who are really 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 ready to go forward right i think that's the goal overall to have a community of people that support each other is that not what we talked about in romans chapter 12 that all of us are a part of the body of christ and we all are a different part on that bible i mean <laughs> spirit feel you threw me off <laughs> thank god for a bible led ministry absolutely and so um we're all different parts on the body right and so it's good to be in a community um of body parts right
And so I look forward to expanding with you guys in that capacity. And I'll see you at that point. Now let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Lord, I... Lord, I don't necessarily want to ask you for anything. I do want to thank you for everything. Father, just let your will be done. Let your will be done as we depart from this place in this space, Lord. My prayer today on behalf of everyone connected to me is that your will be done that your blood cover us all, everyone that is connected to this ministry and this anointing, and that your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That's the best prayer that we can pray. I'm not about to just make up words, but I feel like that's all we need. It's God's will to be done in our lives. Um, what's a good scripture for prisoners? I'll do you one better. Read the book of Ephesians. Ephesians was written by a prisoner. And so if you ever want to empower someone who is in prison, give them a story of a prisoner who was empowered. That as he looked at the guards and looked at their armor, he saw Jesus. That though he was chained, he found out why the caged birds sing. That he produced one of the greatest books in the Bible while in chains. No verses. Books. Read the book of Ephesians, start to finish from a perspective in knowing that Paul was literally in jail when he was writing this book. And so absolutely do that. Um, who wrong towards you keep peace? Or is that, do you apologize to those who do wrong towards you to keep peace? Paul, that's right, Spirit Phil. Um, yes. To keep peace apologize and let go i'm very much one to say listen i'm sorry for any way that i impacted you even if i don't feel like i did anything to them we're gonna part ways here because taking accountability does avoid drama sometimes which is why as leaders you got to be a leader you can't pick and choose when you want to leave if you have the ability to forgive use that forgiveness as a strategy you can avoid a whole plethora of problems just by controlling a situation uh, like that and so is it people pleasing not if you're doing it with strategy if you're going around taking accountability for everything that you that you have not done right just to avoid drama that's people pleasing but if you're being strategic to say mm, i can see that if i it's gonna go like this so i'm just gonna take accountability and walk away from you that's not people pleasing and so, um, no, own, own. I, I tell people all the time, you have to be in control of your life. You have to wake up every single day and operate in control. We talked about thinking all throughout the day. You have to be a thinker, controlling situations and circumstances. And so when you're always in a state of trusting, right? We say uh, uh, um, not thinking, but trusting when our thinking starts to overpower our trusting. But we should always be thinking and we should always be trusting together. And so um, there goes that. What is that for Mountain Time? 6 p.m. Eastern. Oh, -uh. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Mountain Time. 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, so I look forward to seeing you then because you don't want to be late. 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Time, time. UK time. Millie. Now y'all know I love you. But baby, the same way I just typed up here on Google, I'll give it to you in the UK time. 6 p.m. Eastern to UK time. 6 p.m. That's not what I'm looking for. UK time. 6 p.m. to UK time. London, GMT is 11 p.m. London GM to wait when somebody tell me when, what, when, what, when, when, when. You will be on on time. Good. I look forward to seeing you there. In Chicago, I come on at 5, um, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. GMT, whatever time I said uh, in in uh, the in, um, mountain time. All right. And then any other time zone in between. My best friend is Google. Google is faithful. 
Bing came around the corner, though, and Google's not too happy about Bing because Bing's been taking the cake lately, but I'll leave that on the floor. I want you to have a good night. You too, Saba. I want you to know that you're loved. I want you to know that you are blessed and highly favored in the Lord. I want you to know that you are loved beyond measure and beyond comprehension, even as it relates to, and we're not talking about the love I have for you. I'm talking about the love of God in relation to you. I want you to know that you're blessed with every single spiritual blessing in the Lord Jesus, that you have a measure of grace that God has given you to operate in, that you have a measure of faith that God has given you to operate in, that you have a specific area that God has called you to influence. And so I encourage you to arise, sleeper. Arise, 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 sleeper, and stand ten toes down in every single area of your anointing. Don't box yourself in. Be a polymath. As you've been created in the image of God, you can do marvelous things. You are not bound. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> you have been set free. So may the Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. Oh, may he lift up his countenance upon you and give you a peace that washes away every single ounce of your worry, every single ounce of your fears, every ounce of anxiety, even sickness. Let it wash you white as snow that you might rest and be restored for the morning to come. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a good night. Everything as it relates to this ministry is linked in my bio. So if you want to sow into this ministry, you can absolutely do that. If you want to tie them to this ministry, 10% of your increase of your income, you can. If you want to give an offering into this ministry, you can do that. And also, go on therobinboynton.com. It's going to get better. If y'all thought this was amazing, I'm telling you, I don't want to give you fear of missing out, but little nudge. Go check out the website, guys, and um, it's going to be awesome. Am I going to do a secret live tonight, Spiritville? I don't know. It wouldn't be a secret if I told you. <laughs> oh, oh, we shall see, but I, I don't think so. I don't know, but I love you, and I'll see you soon. I'm hanging up on you in three, two, one. I love you too, Tim. God bless you. Keeping your eyes peeled for the secret live. All right, now don't provoke me to do something. Don't provoke me into it. Bye, y'all. I love you. I love you all my mods, every single one. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again for standing by. Peace out, y'all. Uh-oh. I need to click the right button. See how quick. Oh, Lord Jesus. Bye. All right, now I'm hanging up. <laughs>